I am honored to introduce the artist Theodore Miller. Mrs. Miller discovered her artistic talents after undergoing a brain injury. Painting became a part of her ther therapy, and she has been wonderfully painting pieces and designing textiles since. Her work is inspired by her Hellenic cultural background and aspects of her life experiences. She is a contemporary artist who works with texture, layers, and intuitive marks while using numerous mediums. Not only is she my neighbor, but an inspiration. Welcome. Yay. Thank you, Olympia. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I've prepared a little PowerPoint that we can walk through. And um, please interrupt as we're going along. Um, if you have questions and everything, don't hold back. Um, that's what I love about being an artist is there's no rules. Um, we can explore and discover and try things. Um, so jump in and ask any questions along the way. So I'm going to share my screen. Let's see. Give me just a second. There we go. And let me do a quick view. Slideshow. There we go. Can you all see that? I cannot. You cannot see that. OK, hang on. And we even tested this. <laughs> we did. And maybe it's this there. one. Is there. that it? Yep. OK, now let me. Now, is that better? That's perfect. OK, great. So um, I did not go to art school. Um, I definitely consider myself a child artist. That was what I was known for. I mean, I was smart. I liked school. I liked classes. I did, I did well. But I was always the kid doodling and drawing and entering contests. And, and it just it was the thing that I loved the most. Uh, but I grew up in the 70s and the 80s, and I'm the first person in my family to go to college. And my mother immigrated here from Greece. So Olympia and I are similar in that way and that our, our families have Greek ancestry. And we actually met at the local Greek church here. Um, and so for me to go to college was kind of a big deal. And I didn't know anybody in my family that had done it. Um, so I didn't know really, I didn't really think about art as a career because um, I, I was kind of influenced to, to get a good education and get a good job. And, and, and that was kind of like through very traditional ways, right? So I went to High Point College. I got a scholarship there and that's in North Carolina, High Point, North Carolina. And I um, also loved to travel. So my parents, my mother would take us to Greece quite often. We would spend a lot of summers there. Um, my dad was a small business owner. Um, so sometimes my brother and I would even go for the entire summers and stay with our aunts and uncles. So at a very young age, I fell in love with travel in Europe. And so when I was in high school, I was an exchange student and I lived in Denmark. And then when I was in, uh, so that kind of gave me that international spin because I grew up in a very small town, but I knew the world was bigger and better and I wanted to be a part of it. So I was a double major, international business and Spanish. And then I dived into the corporate world and did um, 16 years in the corporate world with an international emphasis for um, quite a while. And then I also did a study abroad program in um, Spain and Sevilla, which is in the Andalusia region. So that, that has always kind of been there as an undercurrent um, is that kind of international exposure and such. Um, so fast forward, I um, when I went to college, I didn't touch art again. I, I, I didn't take one single art course, art course. I was completely focused on getting a degree, getting a good job. Um, and then as time went on, I would find ways to still be creative. Like it wasn't, it was something that I always, um, 
that I always would do things that I, I would make gifts for people, or I would volunteer in different school things and build things in um, for my kids and their parties and all of that. Like, it was just something that I always, I would go places that I'd be like, oh, I could make that. I could make that. And then I would just kind of try and do it. Um, but then in 24, uh, in 2013, 12, 2012, 2013, I started wanting to just find something to do for myself. And so I started getting involved. I took some classes at um, the VMFA and their studio school and just started dabbling some more into it. And then in 2014, I had a terrible injury. I fell down the third floor stairs of my row house in the fan. I was wearing um, socks and I was moving furniture, which is not a good idea at all. And I fell um, pretty hard and I hit my, the back of my um, skull. And so I was really lucky that I didn't break my neck, to be honest with you. Um, but I had a severe concussion and it really um, affected me in a huge way. Um, I, I couldn't speak. Um, I would mix up my words. My memory was really impaired. Um, my balance was all off. So, um, you know, my vestibular system, which is the way that the eyes and the ears take in sight and sound and balance was all affected. Um, I probably spent the first month sleeping probably 20 hours out of 24 hours a day. I just absolutely had no stamina whatsoever. Um, it was very depressing. Um, I had to go to sheltering arms for therapy to help my movement because I would, I would have these terrible headaches and I would be nauseous. And like I said, I could barely speak. So I wasn't allowed to watch TV. I wasn't allowed. I, I couldn't read books because my vision was so blurred. Um, I couldn't be on my cell phone. I couldn't be on social media. Um, I had to be in a dark room most of the time. Um, uh, it just, I, I couldn't leave the house. I couldn't drive. And it was, and this lasted for months. Um, the only time I would leave the house is I would have somebody drive me to my um, therapy sessions. Um, and they kept telling me, my doctors kept telling me, you know, you, you, you need to rest. You, you need, you, your brain needs to rest. You can't think or process information. Um, and so I was bored out of my mind and I was angry and frustrated and the brain does heal, but it heals extremely slow. Um, so they they encouraged me to do do something that I enjoy. Do I like to knit? No, I don't like to know. Well, I like to, you know, draw and paint. And they're like, do that, do that, paint. So after the first kind of six weeks where, you know, I started to have a little bit more balance that I had energy that I could actually get up and dress myself and, and walk downstairs without falling. Um, I would go to my basement where I had set up a little studio space anyway, because I was starting to dabble in it. And I would just paint to get out my frustration. I would just smack paint around, I would use palette knives, I would, and I, and, and I would um, have to do it in small spurts because I would get extremely sleepy. Um, and that was part of the brain just being just overwhelmed and I would have to just go lay down. Um, and then I would come back to it the next day and I would paint some more and then paint some more and then I would scrape things and everything. So it was just, a, a, just I was doing it just to pass the time. And for the first time, I was painting with no expectation of what the end result would be. And I never considered myself like a really good artist because I was always trying to do realism. And I, and I had a really good eye for things. And I would know like, yeah, it's not supposed to look like that, right? It's supposed to look better than that. It's supposed to look more perfectionistic than that. And so I um, never really explored abstract expressionism, but that's in theory what was happening is, is I was painting just out my emotions 
And then I would come and I'd look at it and then I would see an, a different way to, huh, well, that's interesting. I like that little section in that corner. How do I take it to the next level? Um, and so these are some examples of my earlier work when I was in the concussion. And um, there are definitely some patterns here. Um, the top ones, um, it, it, there was um, a lot of darkness before I would add light to it. There were lots of grays, there's lots of texture, there's lots of scraping, there's lots of kind of like uh, anger and emotion, I guess you could say pent up. But then as time continued over these months and months of my recovery, I, I had someone tell me, cause I would start to resent having to rest and close my eyes. And I had a nurse tell me, you know, don't look at the rest period as something that's keeping you from living. Look at it as every time you close your eyes, your, your, your cells are reconnecting in your brain and treat it as a gift. And so it was interesting because then I just started seeing all these circular references and it almost looks like cells and things. And I didn't realize it at the time, but then much later looking back at the images that I took, it, it, I started to see these similarities. Um, let's see, whoops. Oh gosh, guys, I'm sorry, you've been seen. I also work at St. Catherine School um, and I'm in marketing and communications there. So I'm still doing my art on the side of my day job. Um, and so I, let's go to the next screen, whoops. So here's another um, piece of an earlier painting where you can see like the layers building up and such. Um, and I just started like throwing out photographs of my work out to other people. I, I, I was out of social media for so long that I just started um, just to show people what I had been up to. And it was kind of, and then people I had known wanted to know more. And then next thing I know, people started asking to see my work and then wanted to purchase my work. And so then kind of as a celebratory thing, um, after a, um, you know, a full year of recovering, I decided to have a little open house and invite people in and thank them for all of their support and dropping off meals and sending me note cards and missing me and things like that. And people bought stuff. And, um, and so then I was like, well, shucks, if they're doing that, maybe I should think more. But more importantly, what I noticed that I failed to tell you earlier is that the more I painted, the more my symptoms, headaches, dizziness, nausea, fatigue, the more those disappeared. And so for me, the more I painted, it, it became an essential part of my healing process. And it made me physically feel better. And so I just couldn't stop doing it. It actually made me stronger. It made me be able to go for longer periods of time and between having to sleep or rest my brain. Um, and so that was what was the most profound thing. So after about a year and a half of that, I decided, well, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give this a whirl. So I then um, started to, you know, continue with texture and continue with, you know, just start something and just build up the layers and see where it goes. Don't have any set agenda, if you will, just spend time with the painting um, and think about adding a mark and you can always take it away. You, um, you can always quiet it down the chaos um, and, and, and then hone in on a section and, and make it stand. And then I also would never throw away my palette papers um, where I would mix the paint. And then I would look at these little tiny pieces and I'd be like, they're so pretty. And I would, and I would um, peel them off. And I, I emotionally was really hard on myself because I felt almost less of a person. I, I had all these fractures in my memory. It was still taking me a long time to gain my speech back. 
um, that that I was noticing how these little palette pieces were so colorful, even though where they maybe were broken or, or they had, or they would, I would peel them off and they would tear. And I, and, and I just started to kind of look at that as a kind of analogy of my life that, you know, yeah, bad things happen to you, but you know, they're still, you know, they still make up who you are. So I started these pieces on the one on the right on paper where I, and I called them pieces of me where I would just make these gestural marks in black. And then I would add pieces and try to make this composition come together. And so when I play with my palette, my palette um, pieces, I just peel them off and let them see how they look. And I just use this, um, this medium to glue them on and I kind of play with them and it's like playing with puzzle pieces and just trying to make some some interesting organic kind of composition. So then I would, you know, take these wood panels because um, for me working on wood is much more forgiving because like if I have a bad day, I want to paint. If I have a good day, I want to paint. And so sometimes I'm going to scribble and get all the chaos out of my head. Um, and so usually that's the first step is just painting lots of layers of gesso on the wood panel first to build up the layers um, and add texture. And then I will do crazy, crazy, crazy amounts of paint underneath. And then I start to paint white to, to silence um, certain, um, certain areas of the, to paint away, if you will. And then there might be some interesting parts of the composition that I'll start to paint back. And so these are kind of very organic um, pieces and that I would start to um, add more and take away. And this push and pull just keeps happening over time. Um, and like I said, I'll have lots of stops and starts because I still have a family and I still have a full-time job. And so the painting will go through lots and lots of journeys, um, and phases, if you will. And sometimes I get really mad because I will paint over something that I wish I didn't. And, um, but it's okay. You just have to let it go and you, and, and you find something else and you, and you keep going. Um, and so I want to show you actually a close up. So if you see the painting on the left, those lines and marks at the end, um, this is a close up of it. So you can kind of get to see um, how many layers and everything. Um, so I'll like fall in love with a little section and I'll play with it, but then I'll have to step away from it and let it rest and and put the painting aside and come back to it at another time um, because I have a tendency to overwork and lose some of the, some of the intricate pieces. Um, here's another really large painting. This was a 48 by 48 um, painting that um, started kind of the same way. Lots of crazy colors underneath that poke through. Um, some of the compliments I get about my paintings is, is when they see them in person, they tell me they come alive in person because you can walk up to them and see all this, all this layer and texture that maybe you lose when you see the painting really big and from far away. And I, and I love that about it. I wish I did a better job of photographing so they thought my paintings were <laughs> as good in the whole complete form um, on Instagram. But I, I think my work is meant to be appreciated in person because of all those layers and textures. And going um, through um, COVID um, and having to be stuck at home when we all had to shelter in place and everything, I started again to feel almost like that concussion period was coming back. Like I couldn't go places, I couldn't do things and I was frustrated. And I needed to find a way again for the art to calm me. And so I started these meditative paintings where I would research different quotes or proverbs. Like my mother had passed away, but there was always these Greek proverbs that she would tell me in Greek. And I would start to remember those and I would look them up and, and translate what they were in English. And then I started to go and look at different philosophers and Greek writers. And I just, 
you know, especially with all the things that were happening on Monument Avenue and things just didn't feel right. And people were being so hateful and people were dying from COVID and people were getting hurt at protests. And it just really, really affected me. And so I, 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 I went and I found some, some things that were meaningful to me. And one of them was um, uh, a, uh, a poem that a man wrote like from the 1800s. And, and, there, and I just kept thinking back like, you know, their generations have been through tough things, but, and they got through wars and they got through death and they got through disease and they got through, you know, challenges, um, you know, and how did they keep their spirit going? And so this one particular proverb um, or poem stood out to me. It's by Nikos Gatsos, who was a, um, a, a poet and a writer and a lyricist. And it, I'll say it to you in Greek first. Ke andipsaxis yanero dastisume ena sinefo. And in English, what that means, and if you thirst for water, we will squeeze a cloud. And I think that's what I love about the Greek language is that, first of all, it's such a beautiful language um, and it's so descriptive um, and it's so emotional. You can almost feel the energy and the passion of those words. If, you know, if you're thirsty, I'm going to do the impossible. I'm going to reach up into the sky and I'm going to squeeze the water out of a cloud. I mean, like who thinks that way? Right. And so for me, I just, I was, I was like, okay, that's the ethos that I need to bring to this time. And there are things that I want to do to help these causes and things, but I am so, I'm so filled with desperation right now. And I'm hurting for my black and brown families um, that I, you know, have finally realized what they've been trying to tell me um, and share with the, share with us and with the with the death of George um, Floyd and such. And so I call this perseverance. And I literally would just paint blocks of color um, very methodically to kind of slow my brain and stop myself from ruminating and getting caught up with all of the noise and the, and the media. And it would, it would call me, it would center me and I would do them in different colors. And I would just, and I'm literally reciting the words, um, and I'm doing them quiet and I would sit outside in my backyard and I would just do them over and over and over and over again. So art just really is something being just sentimental and meaningful for me. And I keep doing it for me. Um, and it's kind of like the bonus if other people like it. Um, so <clears throat> I then started getting into looking at, you know, different symbols through history and different letters and how the Greek alphabet has all these there. It's just very beautiful. Um, and so I, I started just, again, just sketching and just making marks and seeing how those would go. In the meantime, over the years, I would also, um, you know, I would submit uh, to open calls um, for art shows. And I started out by doing jury group shows. And that was kind of an easier way because I didn't really have like a full body of work per se or a cohesive body of work. So I could submit a few things and there were a lot of no's, a lot, a lot, a lot of no's. Um, but every once in a while, there would be a yes. And, um, and so one of those moments was um, for a, um, a gallery called the Second Street Gallery in Charlottesville, and it's a non-for-profit. So there are galleries that are for-profit that represent artists and they're gonna take 50% um, off the top, whatever, whatever they sell, they're selling to clients and corporate clients and businesses to fill their things. And then there's nonprofit, um, galleries that are more about sharing, um, the art of, of different people. And so 
I, I got in with that juried um, show um, and it was the teeny tiny trifecta. And basically they accept three paintings and small paintings and I got in and it was just a huge, it was a huge um, confidence booster for me. And I went to the show um, and my work um, was among tons of them, but it, they were like right in the middle. And the executive director came up to me and, and told me that she really loved my work. And, um, you know, months later, she sent me an email and said she wanted to see more. And could she do a studio visit? And I'm like, you know, scared and scared and nervous and everything because I don't have a studio. I, I paint in my basement. I paint in my backyard. And, you know, she's got to come to my house and I got to have things to show her. And it was just, it was really just extremely nerve wracking, but she came and, um, she, you know, didn't say a whole lot. Um, and it made me even more nervous, but then she said something to me that I didn't even understand. And it was, your work is so non-derivative. And I, I didn't know if that was a compliment or an insult. It just, I just, um, I, I, it just unearthed me and I had to like look it up and, and I talked to my friends and my husband and like, what does it mean? And what it came to mean was, or, or the way that I interpreted it is that my stuff doesn't look like anybody else's and, and to a, a director of a gallery, that's a good thing, right? Like it, it's not, if it's not something she's seen before, that's great. And she actually came to Charlottesville. She used to work at a big, um, you know, blue collar gallery in New York. And, and so for all the no's that I got, that one yes meant a lot to me. And what I've learned over time is that, you know what, your art doesn't have to speak to everyone. It doesn't have to speak to anyone at all. It has to speak to you. And, and, and sometimes it's really hard to put your art out there. It's a very vulnerable, personal thing. Um, but if you don't share it with the world, you're never going to get feedback and you have to take some risks to do it. And I've taken a lot of risks um, and I've been painting now professionally since 2015. So I'm about to enter my seventh year. And um it's just something you got to just keep putting your foot one foot in front of the other. And there've been times where I've been burnt out and I, um, and I try to do things, you know, to get attention or, or to sell and, and it makes me miserable. And then I take time off from Instagram and I go back to me and what, and, and, and what kind of emotions I have. And then I, just try to go from there. That one little art show from like the very, very early years um, has created some incredible things, um, incredible opportunities for me. Um, get, and I ended up having my first solo show. Um, I had to wait. Um, she books artists two years in advance. <laughs> Um, and so I had to wait a long time, uh, to, to get, to get to that, but that one art show, that one juried art show kind of gave me my big break. So y'all doing okay. Yep. We, I will say they probably have about four more minutes before they'll need to start. Oh my God. Play. I talk way too much, which is my Greek side. So <laughs> I'll just show you a bunch of pictures. Okay of uh, my work at the, the show and some of my small things with the evil eye that have, um, that are good luck charms, some recent work. Again, color and texture and layers are all going to be hallmarks of my work. Um, and then I just keep trying like, okay, well, maybe I try that and then put two paintings in and nail them together and throw them in an acrylic shadow box and call them a lucky charm. And so again, I just keep exploring ideas and then deconstructing words like the word hope, um, el vida, and doing that and then doing ornaments. And so I'm just trying all new things. And then with, with um, Olympia's mom, who's an interior designer, she helped us renovate our bedroom. And so I made textiles 
Um, and then that led to an incredible opportunity to be in Richmond Home Magazine. Um, so you'll see some more of my wallpaper and some of my art. And then I have people that reach out to me now for commissions. So I use my iPad and they send me pictures of the room. And then I start to sketch out different ways we could go. And then I even got invited to do a mural. So I say yes a lot, even to things that make me scared. Um, and so this is a little breakfast to go place. And, um, and you'll see me sketching there. So I spent 26 hours over two and a half days to do this. And that leads me to Q and A. So <laughs> let's give her a round of applause. Thank you very much. All right, we've got uh, about two minutes. So what kinds of questions? Oops, sorry, what kinds of questions do you guys have? There we go. Yeah. We haven't done this in a while, so they're being shy. No questions at all. Okay. Either I bored them completely, oh, or not at all, not or at stumped all. them. <laughs> Reed's got a question. Reed, you got to really speak. So, um, uh, just for Reed, just thinking, because I'm having trouble hearing. So, um, if you could repeat the question. So the question was, how much did Greece impact your work growing up in Greece? I, I think it definitely did. I think um, I think that I am doing my best work now because I am delving into the colors of Greece, the architecture of Greece. Um, it is a country that is so vibrant for the senses that I think um, the color palette and the and the um, architecture and finding kind of new ways to make um, to make it come alive and abstracted ways. Um, I think it very much is a is a piece. And I think that would probably be my my biggest advice to you is what do you love? What resonates with you? you know, what, what explore your own identity, explore your own, um, you know, likes and desires and passion and how, and, and make those come alive in new ways for yourself. Because I feel like I do my best work when I go delving back into those memories and how do I translate those memories into some sort of ab abstracted composition. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. I think we may need to end there, but thank you so much, Ms. Miller. This was excellent and amazing. Guys, let's give her one more round of applause. Thank you all very much for coming today. And thank you so much for taking your time uh, and sharing your art with us. Cause I know that's a, it's a very personal thing and this is a weird situation, but I'm, this has been really fantastic. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks Olympia. Oh my gosh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks a lot uh, for doing this. Yeah, take care. Bye. All right. Bye-bye now.